Well, you've probably got a pretty good collection of router bits going by now, but if you're like me and you're storing your prized router bit collection in a dilapidated old box, it might be time for a little upgrade. I'll talk about some of the issues with storing your bits in a basic box like this and give you a better option moving forward that you can quickly transfer things over to. The best part of all, it's a store-bought option, so you won't have to dedicate a weekend to building a custom box. Instead, you can spend your time on the more important furniture projects in your shop. If you come across any of these high-speed steel spiral bits from Harbor Freight, it's awesome, they're horrifying garbage. And you know, these protective pouches that come with router bits initially, they probably help to get it to your door safe, but beyond that, we're just gonna get rid of them. You don't need them for anything and they're a hassle to use. So for the common bits, nothing too fancy here, just a simple block of wood with quarter inch and half inch holes drilled in it. Add a couple of kerfs at the table saw for collet wrenches and other accessories you might have. Extra holes can accommodate topside wrenches that you might use at the router table. Nothing too complicated there. What really works well for storing large quantities of bits are these tool containers. This one happens to be a Milwaukee Packout container and it's 20 by 15 inches and four and a half inches deep. Now they also have another smaller version that's a little less than half the size, but that same depth. And that might work well for smaller router bit collections or if you wanna store these containers inside of a drawer. Now I still do like my specialty containers. If I have router bit sets that came with a box, I'll certainly continue to use those. I think that's a great solution. But for everything else, I think it's gotta go in one of these packout containers. So really quickly, you'll have a nice way to store all of your router bits with foam inserts. Now the foam doesn't come with the packout trays that you'll have to add. But what I really like about them is they have these plastic bins that come with them the single version or the extra wide version. So you can keep a couple of those if you like for storing bulky items like this extra large locking miter bit. And then there's a channel down the middle of this one for storing bearings and other bulky items. But for the rest of it, we'll just use a foam insert. You can use something sold specifically for these packout trays, or you can just use inserts that have holes already for quarter inch and half inch shank router bits and just cut it to size at the bandsaw. If you do wind up with a couple extra plastic trays, they can be pretty handy for general shop storage. This foam I'm using has little X-shaped cutouts about every inch, and the nice thing about it, it holds them securely, but they're also easy to access. If these are gonna go in the back of your pickup truck to a job site, why then you might wanna look for the version that has pre-drilled holes. Those I think grab the shank a little bit tighter. But for me, this storage bin will live in the router table and it's a benefit to have those pretty easy to insert and easy to remove. Drop down to the description box there you'll find information on products we use today. I'll also put links to some of my favorite router bits. Hey, a next video to watch would be one on the Infinity Mega Flush Trim bit. That's a nice topic to look at if you're in the market for new router bits. Give me a thumbs up if you like the topic and please remember to subscribe to the Thoughtful Woodworker channel. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you on the next one. Let's get rid of this thing. Ah, oh, garbage. Looks like this one was made with the finest MDF and brad nail construction. Can't take credit or blame for that one.